that's a lengthy title, isn't it? Nearest Spline Position Determination. What do we mean by that? Well, we mean how do you determine the closest position on a spline for a given position in space? Like where is the closest part of a spline to a specific vehicle? And more often than not, you then want to translate that to how far along the spline that closest position is. Mathematically, this is a nightmare. And as far as I know, there is no solid non-multi-sample solution to this. Certainly not for the kind of complex shaped splines that we're using in GRIP. And when we started with GRIP, no such function existed within Unreal Engine either. It supported splines, of course, but it couldn't make that calculation for us and still can't, even at version 425 of the engine. How do we solve this then? It seems intractable, mathematically speaking. But GRIP wasn't going to wait. We had to invent a solution here. And the solution we invented has us iterating along the length of the spline, comparing distances between each position that we test on a spline against the target position in space that we're interested in, seeing which is the shortest distance between them. Ideally, you'd want to do this with a very small delta distance along the spline to get an accurate result. Sounds horrendous, right? Yeah, obviously this would be an enormous waste of CPU resources, making thousands of comparisons, so we had to do something better than that, right? We had to take this general method, but we needed to take a different approach to it. And the approach we took was kind of analogous to the binary search algorithm. Divide and conquer. We start by initially taking a very large delta step and identify the closest position on the spline at that very broad scale. This tells us the very general area of the spline that the position we're interested in is nearest to. Then we narrow down the comparison to just the space surrounding that closest position and the two positions either side of it on the spline. Then we iterate again and run the comparisons over that shorter length with that smaller delta step to refine the closest position further. And then again and again. We iterate repeatedly, maybe five times I think to get the required accuracy making something on the order of 25 comparisons to find a good solution, and perhaps 50 for a really accurate one. Although this is a fair amount, it's almost nothing compared to what it would have been without this binary chop approach, which would have been at least 10 times slower. Let's dive into the code for this then, and see exactly how we did this. It's simple enough, but there are some interesting optimizations in there that we can learn from here. It's in advanced spline component.cpp and a member of your advanced spline component called get nearest distance. We provide a location that we're interested in finding the closest position to, our start and end distance along the spline to look for the closest position between, or zero both if you want the whole spline, the number of iterations or refinements to make and the number of samples to test on each iteration, and then an early exit distance, which we'll get to shortly. So we establish the initial min and max distances along the spline that we're going to test against. We take the location given from world space and bring it into the local space of the spline. This is an optimization as positions within the spline are stored in local space. So if we didn't bring that location into local space too, then every spline position that we check against, we'd need to have to bring that into world position instead first in order to do that distance comparison. Nobody wants that. It would be a very needless waste of CPU. And then we start the iteration loop. We calculate a delta step distance between samples for this iteration. And then we start the sampling loop. The first thing we do is to ensure that the distance along the spline that we want to sample is clamped to within the spline correctly, whether it's open or closed. Then we convert the distance along to an input key, which is natively what the spline likes to work with. Then grab the position at the input key, 
which is derived from distance along. And so we now have our test position. We compare the size squared between these two points and the shortest distance that we've already found, if any. We compare the size squared for speed, as straight size is slower, and we don't need to know the distance exactly. We just need to know which is the shortest, and that's the same whether it's squared or not. Let's look at size squared to see why this is important. So press F12 to get there then, and here we're taking three multiplications and two additions, and we're done. Both of these operators, multiply and add, are very fast. Size, however, just up here, also does a square root, which is often quite costly on the CPU, and we should avoid square roots wherever possible. Hence then, the use of size squared in our particular example. When you consider that this is embedded inside two loops for sampling and iteration, you can imagine how much CPU we're saving here. Returning to our function then, if the distance we've measured was shorter than the previous shortest, then we store that away and the distance along the spline that we found it at in the result distance. Now, once we're out of the sampling loop, if this was at least the second iteration, and the new closest position or distance along the spline that we found is barely any different to what it was on the previous iteration, that is within the early exit distance in size, then we're probably not going to improve things by iterating around again and again. So let's quit now. This is another optimization, and generally we have an early exit distance of 10 centimeters, which is plenty accurate enough for our needs, but you can specify whatever you like. Otherwise, we refine the area of the spline that we want to re-examine and loop around another iteration until we have no more. And when we're done, we return the result distance, so the distance along the spline that we found the closest position at. Now, the more observant among you might have spotted yet another optimization in the use of invnum samples here. Normally, this calculation would involve dividing by num samples, not multiplying as we are here. But the divide operator is slow, and we're doing this division more than once, we're doing it for each iteration. We wanted to avoid doing this then, and how we accomplish that is by using the reciprocal of num samples. In this case, what reciprocal means is this line here. 1 divided by the value that you're interested in. Multiplying by the values reciprocal is the same as dividing by the value directly. Well, pretty much. There could be a slight loss of accuracy, but none that we're concerned about here. Less than 0 0.01 when working with values measured in the tens of thousands. So negligible at worst. Now, we have a great flexible fast way of determining our closest position on the spline now. This method, however, is not without error, it has to be said, and where splines loop back on themselves or have otherwise complex shapes, closest position determination can be inaccurate. Where we accidentally hook onto the wrong part of the spline during the initial pass with a large delta step, and then refine the closest position in the wrong area, completely missing the correct solution, lying elsewhere on the spline. Let's look at an example of exactly how this can happen to reinforce that point. So our test position here is closer to the top path on this route, but on that initial pass, the positions on the spline it was comparing it to were too spread out on that top part, and instead we got a closer match on the bottom part, and from there on in, it was never going to work properly. This is the flaw with this binary chop approach. And if you think about it, it seems fatally flawed, doesn't it? Such a deep-rooted problem with the algorithm like that. But all is not lost. Because obviously the public grip game doesn't suffer from this problem, so we must have solved it somehow, right? Right. We decided to work with it and tailor how we use it to get the results that we needed. When a vehicle first enters the track, we use a very small delta step. 
derived from a high number of samples during the initial pass, keeping the distance between these sample positions small in order to ensure that we hook the correct area. This takes longer, of course, but not that much longer. Only around two or three times as much, which was a bit of a surprise to me when I timed it. Regardless though, at the start of a game event, this doesn't really matter anyway. It's just during the event that we should be more careful with our CPU. And so instead, during the game, we take advantage of the fact that we know the closest position on the spline that the vehicle was on during the previous time frame. And we can use that knowledge in the calculation of the current time frame. Yes, we take that closest position, factor in how much the vehicle has moved in space since that last time frame, and then just examine a small section of spline in the vicinity of the area traversed by the vehicle. Because it's just a small area, we can use a small delta step too in order to maximise the accuracy of the nearest position determination. Although this approach doesn't fix the problem absolutely, it does fix it in as much as I've never seen it fail. It mitigates the flaw in the algorithm enough to make it irrelevant. And that's all we need. But there are other times where we have to be equally careful in selecting spline areas for examination too. Like when you've lost sight of the current spline from your vehicle that has maybe crashed into a different part of the track or is occluded for some other less dramatic reason. Like an inconvenient rock, for example. When selecting a new spline to follow, we have to ensure that the closest position that we select on that new spline is related to the last known position around the track for the vehicle. For instance, it would be easy to hook up onto the new spline in the wrong place, maybe if it had two straights running parallel to each other in close proximity, but in opposite directions. You might actually be closer to the wrong section of track here and identify the wrong closest position on the spline. Instead, we have to always have in mind the closest relevant position on the spline, which sometimes may not be the absolute closest position. And yes, Chris created these kinds of scenarios with U-turns and crossovers for me to handle on many occasions. Thanks, buddy. Before we leave this subject and head on forward, some of the more eagle-eyed among you might be screaming at the screen, saying, why are we doing all this, Rob, when this is perfectly good? Find input key closest to world location function. We can call on the use blind component instead. Well, there are a few reasons. Firstly, it didn't exist when we started GRIP, so we had no choice but to write our own. Secondly, though, it's inaccurate. As you can see for yourself if you dig into its code, even the function names reinforce that. But thirdly, it returns a spline input key and not a distance along the spline. I can see no way of converting from one to the other and we need that distance, not the key. They're not the same thing. To its credit, it turns out to be pretty fast, about twice as fast as our implementation. But if it's inaccurate and unusable, then it's no good to anyone. So I hope this lecture has been a good lesson in how to take a seemingly intractable problem and make a workable solution from it. Not only that, but the solution that we crafted started out from something that was itself unworkable. If we'd not used the binary chop technique, this method would have been way too slow. So don't walk away from a method just because it has some issues, because quite often those issues can be ameliorated, as in our case here. We took something quite unsuitable and made it workable by adapting it with a superior iteration technique. And because we knew performance was critical with that iteration, even with the binary chop, we're still looping dozens of times. So we looked closely at what other gains could be made using reciprocal multiplication rather than division. Working in the most optimal 3D space for performance in those closest position calculations. Bringing only the requisite code out of the get location at distance along spline function and embedding it right there in our function. 
using size squared rather than size and providing an early exit route where no more result accuracy would be gained from continued computation. All of these things made it what it is. It's not just been a lesson in spline distance calculation, it's been an object lesson in optimization too. In video games, performance is everything. I can't emphasize that enough. Your game can never run fast enough because there will always be people out there whose gaming rigs need every bit of help they can get. And not all coders are good at this stuff. In fact, in my experience, surprisingly few are. So the more of these tricks that you can bring to the table when writing your own game code, the more respected a coder you'll become.